Welcome to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. We're calling Guinevere. Guinevere is the uh, self-proclaimed world's biggest James Arnold Taylor fan. And my wife and daughter have uh, actually said they disagree with Guinevere because they feel they are. But uh, it's funny. Anyways, let's see if Guinevere's around. Oh, uh, uh, hello? Yeah, what's up? Guinevere? It's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Shut up. No, <laughs> you can start with the shut up again. Shut up. Oh my gosh! It's, I, I'm so thrilled that you called me before, and I can't believe that you're calling me again. It is so nice of you! Thank you, Guinevere. But it's nice of you to be the biggest James Arnold Taylor fan. So you are the self-proclaimed biggest James Arnold Taylor fan. So do you know all there is to know about me? Shut up. Yes. Totally. 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 I have totally listened to every episode of your podcast. Some, some more than once. Really? Do you have a favorite? I totally liked episode five. I thought that was really important. Episode five. Episode five is one of my favorite episodes as well because I really um, opened up about my faith and about my beliefs, but also about trying to inspire everybody. Yes, yes. I was so inspired. I was crying. I was crying when I was listening. I was, I was inspired. And I was crying. Well, that's good. I hope it was crying in a good way. Yes, yes. It was very powerful. Okay, good. And uh, what other episodes then? I loved episode nine as well. Uh, episode nine is, uh, yes. It's, it's, it's almost like we're the same person. Shut up. I know, okay. But then there's been other ones that are great too. I loved your adoption story. I loved when you interviewed Ratchet. I love all the interviews. I loved when you did Gandalf. Now, now that, that episode was really good too. I was like episode 16 or something. That was a pretty uh, important one too. Yes, I was very grateful. You were talking about a heart of gratitude, and I am very grateful for the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Well, that's so nice of you. Thank you. And I am so grateful for all of you fans. Shut up. <laughs> you remind me of Elaine Bennis on... Seinfeld! Yes. Seinfeld, oh my gosh, my parents watched Seinfeld, and then I started watching Seinfeld. So, okay, so, yes, because you're young, you're too young to have watched Seinfeld when it came out, right? Shut up, yes. Totally. But you know, Elaine Bennis, the character on there, uh, played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus, she would say shut up to Jerry all the time. It was very funny. Shut up. Yes, just like that. Shut up. Yes. This is interesting. So I should give you a little quiz about me, about James Arnold Taylor, and you, and if you can, if, okay, okay, okay. Shut up. No. Okay. I've got an idea, Guinevere. Yes. If you can answer all of my questions right... I will send you an autograph picture of me and my characters and all of that. Shut up. No. Shut Oh my gosh, totally. Totally, totally, totally. Yes, yes, yes. Quiz me, quiz me, quiz me. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Um, okay, let me think. Although, I, that music you're playing in the background, does that ever end? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Shut up. I gotta think of questions here. Should I bring somebody in? Maybe I should bring in Reginald. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Bring in Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. Okay, uh, hey, Reginald! Shut up. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, my gosh! Hello, Reginald, don't call me Reggie. Hello, Guinevere. Lovely to talk to you. Oh! His British accent is so dreamy. <laughs> Your accent is dreamy, Reginald. Yes, of course it is. It's British. You know, some people have said uh, Reginald sounds like David Tennant. Shut up. I love David Tennant. He is so good. Doctor Who... I love Doctor Who. Do you watch Doctor Who? You know, I, d- I don't watch Doctor Who. I didn't think you did. Well, see, that, so now there's something you, maybe you didn't know about me. It's because you've never talked about it on, on anything. No, yeah, I, I never got into Doctor Who. But I know people love it. I should really give it a shot because it's on, I think it's on like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or one of those things that I have. Yes, totally. You should totally watch it. It's so good. Yeah, I think I would watch it. I think I would enjoy it. But yeah, people have said, Reginald, you sound a little like David Tennant. Or perhaps David Tennant sounds like me. Oh, whoa, look at that. Shut up. That is so funny. Thank you, Guinevere. Oh, I love it. All right. So, Reginald, Guinevere states that she knows everything there is to know about me, that she is the biggest James Arnold Taylor fan in the world. Shut up. <laughs> no. Right. Well, then we'll have to uh, ask her questions and see if she knows the answers. That's right. So do you have some questions about me that you could ask? I think I know most everything there is to know about you, James. All right, then let's start with, uh, well, what do you got? Right. Guinevere. Yes, Reginald, don't call me Reggie. You can just call me Reginald. Oh, Reginald! 
She likes saying your name. Reginald. Yes, I'll let her do that. Guinevere, tell me, at what age did James Arnold Taylor decide to be a voice actor? Oh, that's so easy. Four years old. He was four years old. I know it. I've, I've watched the video, how I became a voice actor on his YouTube channel, but I knew it before that because he talked about it in his stage show, which I've seen his stage show multiple, 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 multiple times. Wow. So, wait, did you go to Star Wars Weekends? Yes, I absolutely did. I was at Star Wars Weekends all the time. I love Star Wars Weekends. I wish Disney would bring Star Wars Weekends back. It's such a bummer that it's gone. I know. We're all upset that it's gone. Maybe they'll bring it back. And if they do, we will need to start a campaign, everybody listening, to make sure that I get to be the host again. Okay, everybody? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I will head that up. I will totally head that up for you. Thank you, Guinevere. So, uh, yes, that's actually right, though. Four years old. That's absolutely correct. Do we have, like, a bell or a sound effect or something? Okay, yeah, look at that. Okay, just got one right. All right, what else you got, Reginald? Right. Here's one. How many years has James Arnold Taylor been voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi? Oh, that's, oh, oh, oh. It's like, it's it's coming up on, like, 18 years now. That's, that's right. Ah! Okay. Right, right, right. I think you're asking questions that, you know, in fact, I think most of these questions people could, if anybody listens to the podcast, they could answer these questions, Reginald. Right. I need to come up with something that is a little trickier. What was James Arnold Taylor's name on the radio when he was a disc jockey? What did he go by? His name, well, his name is James Taylor. James Arnold Taylor. Right. Yeah, I would go by James Taylor back then, but that's not what you're asking, right, Reginald? Right, right. Now... What was his handle? What was his... What did they call him as a DJ when he was on KTYD in Santa Barbara from 8 to midnight? Oh! Oh, I know this. Oh, I know this. He was the... Uh, rock, he rocked, the rock, some, it was, um... It was, um... The, rock, the, the, the Night Rocker! The Night, night, night Rocker! Yes, that's right! Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. No, okay, don't drop the phone. Don't drop the phone. I was just so excited. I knew I knew that. I knew I knew that. You did. You knew it. You did great. You're doing great. That's three so far. All right, Reginald, you got anything, uh, you know, trickier? Right, right, right. This may seem easy, but it's not. What is James Arnold Taylor's favorite character to voice? Oh, okay. Oh, well, he doesn't... He, it's... What? Okay, so... He always says, when people ask him, they say, you know, what's your favorite character? Because people ask him that a lot of times. And then he says, I don't necessarily like to have favorites. So what I say is, whichever is the one that I'm voicing at the time is my favorite. So it would be all of them at any point in time whenever he's voicing them. That's absolutely right, Guinevere. Ah! Wow, she is, uh, she's got it. She did it, she did it all, uh, uh. Reginald, don't call me Reggie. I forgot your name. <laughs> Stop it. Well, I'm just I'm saying. Uh, anyways, uh, she's Guinevere. You've done fantastic. You do. You really are a big James Arnold Taylor fan. Do you know uh, my favorite color? Red. That's right. Even though I don't really have favorites, but that's kind of the one. Yeah. Right. Yes, I know that you have red cars and you love red and you've always loved red. That's true. Do you know my uh, favorite thing to eat at night? What's my favorite snack at night to eat? Yes, yes. You like a bowl of granola. You, you, you will eat a bowl of granola and you make the granola yourself. That's absolutely right. Guinevere, it's creepy. You know everything there is to know about me. It's almost like you live here in my home or that you're me. Shut up. Okay. We are, in fact, going to shut up. Thank you, Reginald, for helping out. Right, right, right. Thank you, Guinevere. Lovely to talk to you. Oh, oh my gosh, Reginald, thank you. It's so great to talk to you. Cheers. Cheers! All right, cheers, Reginald. Not to you, just to her. All right. Well, Guinevere, thank you for being on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. You're kicking off this episode of the podcast. That's exciting, right? Shut up. That is so exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear it. All right. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for being a great fan of the show and supporting the show and, and supporting me through all these years. I really appreciate it, Guinevere, and I am going to send you that. We're going to get, uh, Billy's going to get your information and uh, he'll call you back and... and uh, I love Billy. I know, I know. Uh, and he's going to get the address and stuff to send you uh, some autograph pictures that I will send. Oh my gosh, shut up. That is so exciting. Thank you so much. 
You're welcome. Hey, do one last thing for me. Uh, call in Mr. Announcer Guy. Just say, hey, Mr. Announcer Guy. Shut up. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Um, oh, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, Guinevere? Oh! Hello, Mr. Announcer Guy. Hello, Guinevere. How are you? Oh, my God. Shut up. I am doing so good. How are you? Shut up. I am doing well, too. Shut up. You shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. No, you shut up. All right. Okay, everybody, shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Guinevere. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Shut up. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. Oh, Mr. Announcer Guy, it's so nice to make somebody's day like that, isn't it? Shut up. Oh, okay. We're still doing that? No, I'm just kidding. Yes, it's very good. All right. You ready to introduce the show? Sure. Why not? Give me some of that funky tunes. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time for the James Arnold Taylor podcast, talking to myself, the Jetcast, starring the guy that does every voice you hear, unless he's interviewing somebody and he says who it is and then it's not him, James Arnold Taylor! Thank you. That's right. And as a matter of fact, you know, uh, when we first started the show, we were doing little clips of interviews and we've I've had interviews throughout and I think today on the show we're going to actually going to do some interviews. I'm going to play some uh, uh some interview pieces and uh, so that'll be fun from some past interviews. And then coming up in a couple weeks Star Wars Celebration is coming up and that's very exciting. So uh the episode just before Star Wars Celebration uh starts which is going to be April April 10th, which is just in another uh, week or so. That is going to be which is just in a few weeks or so, that is going to be an episode that is a tribute to uh, my work in Star Wars as a host of Celebration and Star Wars Weekends. And we're going to look back on memory lane. We're going to take a little walk down memory lane, rather, play some interviews, play some snippets, tell some stories about Celebration to get you all prepared for Star Wars Celebration coming up in April in Chicago. So that uh, that episode will be coming up soon. That'll be a lot of fun. But today, I do believe we are going to have uh, an interview uh, segment as well, play some interviews from somebody. I don't know who yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. All right, man. I'm going to go now. Okay, Mr. Announcer Guy. Bye-bye. See you, dude. Shut up. Okay. <laughs> well, now it's just us. And the music hits. And then I do my little thing. You know, it is kind of a little, uh, it's regular, uh, just a regular little thing now I do on the show. It's kind of like this. I do a little bit with some voices, and then Mr. Announcer Guy comes in, and he announces the show, and then the music plays, and then we kind of start the show, but there's always like a pre-show. I kind of like that. I just think it's fun, because it's kind of like you're here with me behind the scenes before the show starts, and I think that's just, I don't know, that's my kind of comedy. As a kid... I loved comedy. I knew I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I knew I wanted to do voiceover. I wanted to do both. I really did. So when I was like 12 years old, I started writing my uh, first stand-up comedy routines. I used to watch The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and David Letterman, Late Night with David Letterman, every night. And I I would tape them as well. I had a VHS recorder. I had a Betamax at first. Boy, I'm dating myself. A lot of you don't even know what I'm talking about. So you all just have, um, you know access to things now streaming and then you have built-in DVRs that record stuff digital video recorders right that's what DVR stands for did you know that but before that even there was TiVo TiVo was one but TiVo isn't I don't know if they even make is is TiVo still a thing I don't know if it is I talk about it in my stage show I reference TiVo but it's probably outdated now but I have to update some things in my stage show I'm I'm planning on doing that I have these wonderful pieces I was going to read some of them from my show uh, for you all here and maybe I'll do that in, in, in an upcoming episode. Read some some of the newer pieces, pieces that I've written. I actually wrote them years ago, and I've just never produced them. So when I do my stage show, I'm off on a tangent already. I know I started, I started saying one thing, and now I'm saying this. Sorry. But when I produce the elements for my stage show, I make them all. The first thing I do is I record a scratch track. For, well, the first thing I do is I write it out. Unlike this show, which I don't write anything out for. I just kind of go. That's why I'm all over the place. But... Um, So I write out these bits and then I record a scratch track and I listen to that and then I produce it. I put music under it. And then if it's a video, I make videos with it and words and graphics and all of that stuff and produce it all up. And then that's how also how I end up kind of memorizing it all because I do have to memorize everything. If you've seen my stage show, you would know that there's lots of media in it, a lot of video elements that I interact with. 
The way that works is I hit start on those things and once they start, I have to go. So I cannot miss a beat. I can't flub a line. You know, when I do that thing, similar voices, when I go through all the voices, nobody is cueing each one. That is all pre-recorded, and I have to then do the voices live. So, you know, I've done that show well over 100 times, probably close to 200 times, all over the world. And there's really only a handful of times where I have flubbed a line here or there on it. I'm very blessed. God is... is has blessed me with the ability to do that. And it's also because I cover myself in a lot of prayer before I do the shows. I really do. But so I've been writing new pieces for the show. I want to create a new version of the show. I've talked about that. And so I thought about reading some of them on the, on the uh, podcast here sometimes. So I'll, I'll do that maybe at some point, but um, got to remember exactly what it was. I was starting to talk about <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> oh, oh yes. It was a uh, standup comedy and everything. So I wanted to be a stand-up comic. And from the age of 12, I was writing material and coming up with things. And I did stand up at 16. And I've told that story before, but, um, Ooh, water, everybody water. Do you have your water? See, you, you thought I wasn't going to remember. Mm, that is good water. Oh, it's very dry here right now. <clears throat> I gotta be honest with you. I've been doing podcasts all day. This is the third one I've recorded today. My family is at Disneyland today. My wife and my daughter and my daughter has two friends with her and it's a Saturday I'm recording this. I don't usually record on a Saturday, but because they're gone all day and all night, I'm recording as many episodes of the podcast as I can to get caught up. So all of you are hearing this when you're hearing it, but I recorded it many weeks earlier. So there you go. But yes, so stand up comedy, I would study. So I had comedy albums. I had Steve Martin. I had every one of Steve Martin's albums. I still have bits memorized. And in fourth grade, fifth grade, I would get up in class and for like show and tell, you know, and I would do routines from Steve Martin's comedy album. Me and my friend, Neil Wood, Neil was a buddy of mine and we, we would do routines and stuff. And, uh, you know, and some of Steve Martin's stuff was not really age appropriate. And Neil got in trouble one time for actually saying some of the lines verbatim from Steve Martin. I always cleaned it up because again, uh, swearing and stuff has never been my thing, but, uh, so yeah, Robin Williams, Steve Martin, George Carlin. Uh, I know it's it's not uh, uh, Richard Pryor. It's not politically correct now to say Bill Cosby, but I, I I must tell you, you know, Bill Cosby's comedy albums were absolute brilliant, brilliant stuff, and I listened to those growing up all the time. It's you know, so between comedy albums by all these comedians, Robert Klein. Robert Klein was a huge uh, comedian at the time when I was growing up, and I I loved Robert Klein, Richard Lewis. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried, um, uh, Jerry Seinfeld, Paul Reiser, all these guys, you know, in the eighties and such. And so I just loved them all. And I would memorize the routines and practice them and do the voices and all of that stuff. And then I would write my own stuff and I just loved stand up comedy. And I've, you know, I've been writing a little comedy stand up stuff uh, again here because my stage show isn't really stand up comedy, but comes into play in the delivery and my being comfortable. So when I first did stand up, I did really well the first night. And that's great because if I had bombed, I think I probably never would have gone back to it. I did stand up probably four or five times before I bombed. Now, what do I mean by bombed? If you don't know, that's the term we would use in stand up or in performing. Like if you, if you did bad, if you didn't have a good night, you didn't do a good show, you bombed. And it was probably the fifth or sixth time when I bombed and that was hard. But the good news was I had ha already had a few shows under my belt. And so I knew, but this isn't the end. And what I realized as somebody that is a people pleaser, I would always be performing for the audience. And after that bombing, I decided I would perform for me. And what I mean by that is that I would just do the show for myself. And in so doing, I was doing it more for them. And they enjoyed it more because I relaxed and everybody relaxed and it was all better. So when you're performing, think of it that way. Do it for yourself of like, what would I like to see? What makes me laugh? What, what's funny to me? What's fun to me? What's this, that, or the other? And that helps you as a performer to perform better and to not worry about the audience. Because the truth is the audience just wants you to enjoy and have a good time. That's really true. They want you to be good. They don't want you to bomb. All right. They don't. They want you to do great. That's, that's when I go to a show, that's what I want. When people go to a show and pay money and stuff, that's what they want. They want it to be great. They want you to be great. So just believe in yourself. If you're performing, no matter what you're doing, you're singing, you're dancing, you're uh, doing a play, you're doing comedy, you're doing voiceover, whatever it is. 
And I think of when I perform as a voice actor, it's just another little performance on a tiny little stage on a microphone for a small crowd through the glass or through my headphones or wherever it is because some of the stuff I do at home. And if I'm doing it alone, sometimes you do that. Sometimes you record stuff on your own. Then I just talk to, like I'm talking to all of you right now. You know, the funny thing is, is I'm talking to all of you now. I'm recording this on February 23rd at 5.35 p.m. But it's going to go out in March. Well, like on the 20th, I think this comes out. Oh, my friend Tom Babbis's birthday. Look at that. Uh, that's probably when you're listening to this right now. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is, that's great. Or it could be the next week. I don't know. I'm confused because I'm, <laughs> I'm so, I'm getting so far ahead. But anyways, but the point is, I'm talking to you all now, even though I really truly am just me in this room talking to myself. Nobody is hearing this yet. You all won't hear this for weeks after I record it. In my mind, I'm talking to you all right now, though. That's how it works. I've always been that way and I've always just, so, but once I realized again that I don't need to worry about pleasing all of you, I just need to have fun, then it just becomes fun. And that's the thing with this. I, you know, I go like, well, who do I want? I want to call Gwen, Guinevere. I mean, she doesn't like it when you call her Gwen, just like Reginald doesn't like Reggie. So, so I wanted to call Guinevere. So I called Guinevere because that's, that's fun to me. And that's funny. And then Midway through, I realized, oh, I'm going to have her. Uh, she knows everything about me. Let's do a quiz. You know, the funny thing is, is doing that little bit there at the beginning of the show. I had a hard time coming up with questions about me. <laughs> That's why I brought Reginald in. Reginald really, truly helped me. <laughs> it's so funny. It's weird uh, when you spend so much time talking to yourself. So, you know, the I guess the big question that we've never really uh, broached here is, do I talk to myself all the time normally. Yes, absolutely. I talk to myself in the car. I talk to myself uh, when I'm alone. I, I, I do. Generally speaking, in my mind, I'm talking to God when I talk to myself. And I, I'm not trying to say I'm God. I mean, I'm usually having a conversation with God uh, when I am alone. You know, I'm just asking him questions. I'm talking to him. I'm thanking him. I'm, you know, I, I'm reading his word. I'm talking about it, whatever it is. But also I will, and I notice my wife does this. If I'm working on the computer and I'm doing stuff, I might go, and I'm going to do this here like that. And I'll click and then I'm going to do this and that and this and that. So I'll talk to myself like that too. I think it's fine. I think it's good. I don't think anybody should ever worry about uh, talking to themselves. That's fine. Okay. You're, you're all good. It's not unhealthy. It's not unnatural to talk to yourself. That's good water. So anyway, so that's what I do. And that's how I formulate so many of my ideas. I always got ideas. So I carry books, those little books, you know, you can get like the little moleskin books at uh, Barnes and Noble. It's got it here. You got the little, the little band on there. So the the book it has, it's, it, these, these are blue. I got a little blue one and it's got a little rubber band, like a strap, like a rubber strap that matches the book and it goes around the side to keep it closed. And then I keep a little pen in there. What are my favorite pens to use to write with? Oh, it's looking at the package here. It's the Pilot is the brand. It's the Bold G2 Premium Gel Roller. I love these pens. They write so easy. My wife likes the ballpoint pens. I don't like a ballpoint as much as I like these gel rollers. So there you go. And perhaps you're listening going, I like those too, James. Look at that. Good roller. Anyways, um, okay. So on to other things. Wow. So many things going on. So many cons happening so many uh, new things. Okay, look, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to not uh, give away the big secret here, but I have to. Uh, just, just, just stop, 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 James. Stop. Let me explain to you all why I'm laughing. What I'm talking about. I started recording this podcast in February. In the middle of that last sentence, I did an edit. Half of it was recorded in February. The other half was recorded now, which is March 21st. It's like a month later because I never finished this podcast. I was trying to catch up and I didn't catch up. And so now we have time traveled within this podcast. So, <laughs> so that's, that's what's going on. So after I talked about the pens and I went, okay, this is now a month, almost a, what, like a month later and I'm recording. So here's what happened. And, I, and you can probably hear my voice. And if you follow me on social media, you know I got a cold after going to the con in Seattle. 
So I was, I was catching up with all my podcasts. I was recording as many podcasts as I could to catch up for the cons. I caught up, but then I got so busy, I wasn't able to finish this episode, episode 23. Uh, I was never able to finish recording it. So the other ones I already had done and I knew they'd be done and play during the time that I was at the con and when I came back from the con and all of that. But this one, okay, so right now we have time traveled within this podcast. This podcast started, I started recording it in February. It is now March 21st, almost the end of March, and I'm finishing it. And uh, the beauty of editing, see, I could have gone on and acted like nothing happened and just gone, but I can't do that to all of you. I can't. I can't, I can't lie. Ooh, there's a beautiful, big, fluffy cloud outside. I just looked out the window and saw it. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. All right. Anyways, so yeah, so I started recording this. I did all of that. I hit stop thinking I would get back to this podcast later that day. But as I had been mentioning, I had recorded three podcasts in that day and my voice was just fried and I was exhausted. I have uh, now, right now, I have a cold and you can kind of hear it. And I have a session for Fox in about 20 minutes. They're going to dial me up. And so I, uh, but I, I was going, well, I'll, I'll edit while I wait because they kept bumping the session back. And so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll edit while I go and I'll listen to this podcast and see what I've done. And I, I realized, oh, I never finished recording that podcast. Well, I better start recording some more. So here we are. We're like, what, 25 minutes into the podcast. And uh, there you go. So that's what's happened. So we have, we have time traveled within this podcast, within an instant. And I did enjoy, I was, I think I was saying in one of the last podcasts, oh, I don't know if I had a good time in Seattle. I had a great time in Seattle. I did. We'll talk about it now since it's, it's done, but I did catch a cold. I don't know how I caught the cold. Maybe I caught it from shaking. I don't know, 1200 hands, uh, probably being in a, in a space with the air, all, you know, that convention air, And everybody's sick and coughing and hacking and blowing and snotting and all of that. You kind of bounce, even, even me who, you know, I had not had a cold in four years, four years, February of 2015 was the last time I had a cold and it is now March of 2019. That's pretty good, right? I think that's pretty good. That goes to show you, if you take care of yourself, you eat right, you breathe, you meditate, you do all of that and you do not touch your face when you're out in public and such, and you try to watch it when people cough or sneeze at you or around you or near you, you can be careful. And so that's what happened. But uh, this time the, uh, the, it all caught up with me. I think also I, I, I taught a voiceover class. I stayed up late. I just did a lot of stuff. And anyways, I'm making a vlog right now of me being sick. People always ask when you're sick, how do you, um, how do you deal with a cold and your voice? as a voice actor. So I decided to vlog the entire time I have this cold. So I've been recording videos every day and showing you all what I do and some of the things I do to keep my voice. Cause you know, I mean, honestly, if you listen to me right now, you wouldn't know that I have a massively congested nose and sore throat and all of those things that you get with a cold and that have been blowing my nose nonstop for the last uh, few days. And in fact, if I want to clean it up even more and I want to sound even more like me without the cold, I can kind of do that. I can see for short bursts of time. But in a moment, I'm going to have to go in the booth and do the Fox Sunday stuff. It's The Simpsons, Family Guy, and Bob's Burgers. It's Mr. Announcer Guy. And my voice is really resonant right now, so that's what I'm doing. So, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't sound like I've got a cold, does it? That's from really taking care. And, And again, you'll watch the vlog in a few weeks here after I edit it up. I've got a little lozenge in my mouth right now. Sorry. Um, And see what I do to make my voice stay as fresh as I can while I have a cold. But uh, yep. Anyways, I think it's just funny. I started the podcast a month ago. I finished it. Yeah. I was so ahead. That was the thing. My plan was record like, you know, get like four or five podcasts ahead. So you're always just ahead. And I did it for a few weeks, but then here's the problem. You do them and you know, you have them. So you go, well, I got a couple, I I can, I can rely. I don't have to do a podcast this week. Oh, I won't do one this week. I won't, you know, and then time catches up and then you're like, you're back behind. So that's what happened with this one. So this will come out next week. Yesterday, the one came out, this one will come out on the 27th. So you're listening to this on the 27th. If you listen the day it comes out and that's just, uh, that's just next week. 
but I was hoping to have had it all finished and everything. And now too, now I've got to still do a bunch more uh, podcasts to be ahead. So, but when I started this podcast, <laughs> I was ahead and now I'm, I'm just the same as usual. Oh boy. What are you going to do? What can you do? Nothing. Well, I mean, you can, you'll just sit and listen. I, I, on the other hand, I need to work hard to uh, record some new podcasts. Okay. So do I, um, do I hate being sick? Yes. I hate, I, uh, I hate it, but I also try to just go, you know what? It's life. And that's what happens. I probably shouldn't be talking so much. I, I really probably shouldn't because I need to rest my voice. So, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Fox is going to dial me up here in a little bit. I'm going to do a session. So I'm going to hit stop and then I'm going to come back. But you know, the thing is, is you all will hear no difference. And this might be later today. It might be tomorrow. It might be Monday that I come back and do this. So this podcast is a break is, is breaking up into several segments, several days, several times. So I'm going to hit stop now. And when I come back, it'll be instantaneous for all of you listening. But for me, it will have been uh, hours or days, perhaps. All right. Here we go. I'm hitting stop now. And I'm back. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm like Einstein, the dog in Back to the Future. For me, the trip was instantaneous. Well, no, for you, the trip was instantaneous. You're like Einstein. I'm not, whoa, wait a second, Doc. You're like Einstein because you went and traveled through time. But for me, it's now a completely different day. Well, Doc, this is heavy. Wait, well, it has nothing to do with it, Marty. Yeah. Okay. So from when that I said I'm stopping now to when I came back just now, <laughs> it's been, um, well, now it is, today it is the 26th. Great Scott, Marty. It's March 26, 2019. Well, wait a second. Doc, March 26, 2019. You telling me that we jumped into the future in this podcast? That's right, Marty. We started the podcast in February. Now it's March. Whoa. Uh, yeah, it's um, so I, I hit stop. I rested my voice. You may not know it now because I do. I sound a little funny, but here's the thing. Completely done with the cold. So <laughs> within like a, what, five minute time period of this podcast, I had a cold <laughs> and now I'm done. Yeah, now it's the next week and I am much better. Here's the other cool thing. I vlogged. I talked about this a, a minute ago. Well, a couple minutes ago for you, but for me, it was a couple days ago. So this is the, this is the great time continuum podcast episode. This is the great Scott episode. We're going to call it because I'm, I, so when I started this podcast, I, it was a month ago. I had no idea of all the things that would be taking place. I figured I was going to end it then, but instead I stopped midway. Then I I realized, oh man, I'm not caught up because why I wasn't caught up because I had to go to Seattle. And then I caught a cold in Seattle, which made me a whole week behind on making the podcast. So now I'm actually making this episode right now. Today, the 26th is the day before it comes out. So when I started this podcast, I was like, I have no idea how Seattle went because I can't actually say because I wasn't there yet because it hadn't happened yet. But now by the time we've finished this podcast, all of that time has already passed. And in fact, this podcast comes out tomorrow. So we are completely caught up in time, in the time continuum. However, this next week, I'm going to record as many new podcasts as I can to try and get ahead again for the next ones. So when you're listening to those, well, okay, forget it. I won't even go there yet because you know why? Because that hasn't happened. So I just need to get through this podcast, <laughs> but I hope it's fun and funny for you. It's funny and fun for me because I'm listening and I'm going, wow, listen, um, all the time periods that have changed. So I'm better now. I don't have the cold anymore. I, I shot videos. I vlogged throughout my whole time of having the cold and I'm going to put a video together. I'll probably put it together in a couple weeks though. So it'll be way past that when the video comes out on my YouTube channel. But I hope all of you subscribe and watch the channel and watch that video when it comes out of me with a cold. So I, I recorded me at my worst with the cold and then every day, like what I did to get myself better to try and teach all of you because people always ask me, what do you do if you're a voice actor and you get a cold? How do you, how do you handle that? So I recorded all of it to show you how I handle it and what I do and the things I take and the things I do to keep myself better. I probably already said all of that in this podcast already, but I can't remember what I said the other day. 
even though for you it was just a couple minutes ago. <laughs> but I'm not editing. I'm I'm choosing to not edit it out. So if I'm repeating myself within this podcast, everybody, sorry. It's because of that. Yeah. Okay. So you just get to deal with it. You you get to deal with the the great time conundrum continuum of episode 23 of the James Donald Taylor podcast. I wanted to, but now the other thing is, is because of all this, I've thought about, oh, what are the various things I could do on this podcast? And one of them is, I'm opening iTunes, is, um, and I've wanted to do this for a while now, which is encourage you. You know, I always like to encourage you on the podcast, but I want to encourage you by reading some things to you. And the things I want to read to you are lyrics from songs. Look at that. That's not it. Hang on. Okay. Hold up. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Now, I I don't know if anybody even knows that saying anymore. Hold the phone. They would say, hold the phone. And I guess what hold the phone was... I don't know, let's look it up. Okay. Used for telling someone to stop what they're doing immediately. Ways of telling or asking someone to wait. Hold on. Just wait. I'm guessing it comes from somebody saying, hold on. Hold that phone. Don't don't make that call yet. Type of thing. That's what it, yeah. Okay. So anyways, I wanted... I'm looking up. I'm in my iTunes. Boy, oh boy, iTunes bugs me sometimes. There's a lot of stuff in here. Apple, love you, and I kind of hate you. I've got all those little uh, clouds with the arrow on it saying, you haven't downloaded this. You know, it's like, you know, okay, it lives in the cloud. That's fine. But I'm a little old school still. See, I also, you know, we got Apple Music. I don't know. You, some, most of you probably have Spotify. I find that most younger people have Spotify. Most old people like me get Apple Music. Um I have Apple Music, but it took me years to get Apple Music because I have a real problem with not buying specific albums. So, for example, if somebody I like musically has an album, a new album out, I just want to buy the album. I want to support the album. But if you have Spotify or if you have Apple Music, well, you pay your monthly fee and you just get it. But that to me, that doesn't seem fair. I pay what? What do I pay for Apple Music? I don't know what eight bucks a month or whatever. And then that gives me access to, I think, literally, I'm, I'm going to use literally here, literally millions of songs. Um, that's crazy. Uh, so I still buy albums. But anyways, so I'm looking here. Matthew West. Matthew West is one of my uh, favorite Christian artists. If you don't know Matthew West music, I think, I think you should look it up. I think you should go to your Spotify, you should go to your Apple Music, and you should listen to some of Matthew West. What would I recommend? Um, Oh, gosh, I I guess he has it. I would guess he has the greatest hits or something. But um, stories, uh, oh, man, the one album he did, uh, The Story of Your Life. If you're somebody that's going through stuff in life and you feel like you want some music to help you emotionally, Matthew West's album, The Story of Your Life, That'll be pretty great. Let me explain why. Matthew did something tremendous in this album. He asked his fans to send him letters. Okay, much like you all send me letters and stuff, but but telling actually different in this because I didn't ask this. You all just send me emails and stuff and a lot of you tell your stories in it. But what he asked, he asked all of his fans to send him letters telling their stories. And then he locked himself up in a, uh, I think a cabin that they own, you know, and got away for a while and read through all the letters and wrote songs based off of the letters he read. So he wrote songs for people because some of these things are like experiences he never could have experienced himself. He, you know, didn't go through, but he knows his fans do and he wants to write music that is meaningful to them. So he took some of the hardest stories, some of the toughest stories that people wrote and turned them into songs to make healing for people. And I got to tell you, you know, for me personally, really, so many of these songs I could relate to growing up in kind of a broken home. Um, Yeah, the story of your life, my own little world, strong enough, family tree. Oh my gosh, family tree is, uh, and then to me and one less and two houses. 
look up the album Matthew West, W-E-S-T, just like North, South, East, West, Matthew West, The Story of Your Life. If you're, you know, somebody that digs that. And uh, you know what? You don't have to be a Christian to listen to this music. He's not just going, and Jesus, 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 Jesus. That, that's, I think that's what most people that aren't Christians think that Christian music is all about. All of us doing that. There's a difference between praise music and and Christian rock and roll or Christian contemporary music or Christian pop music. Big difference. You could, you know, a a Christian artist like Matthew West or uh, Brandon Heath or um, Sidewalk Prophets, uh, Audio Adrenaline, I'm I'm going old and new with that, Uh, Jason Gray. These are all a lot of people I listen to and, and love their music. Not every song is about Jesus. Not every song is even about God, many of them are just good songs about trying to kind of make it through this life. There's always a bit of faith kind of connected to it. Why? Because they're Christian artists and they have faith. <laughs> that's that's where they cling to, just like myself. That's what I cling to. So, um, but yeah, Matthew West's album, The Story of Your Life, that's not the one I was going to read some lyrics from, but I highly recommend many of you so and study this album and find out the stories like so my own little world is about a guy that just kind of lives in his own little space and doesn't want to be bothered by people and you know homeless people on the streets or things on the news and just wants to kind of you know isolate and not do and and it's it's he kind of convicts you of those feelings with without putting guilt on you because it's kind of like yeah we all go through that so it's really neat uh there's one called two houses which is about a family going through divorce, you know, a kid that's like, now I've got two houses. I've got two, two birthday cakes. I've got two, this, I've got two, that, but I really just want one, <laughs> you know, just want my parents to be together. Um, broken girl or the reason for the, Oh man. Okay. The reason for the world. I'm going to see, can I get the lyrics to that? If I click on that song info lyrics. Ah, okay. Listen to this. This is from the story of your life. This was not the lyrics I was going to read to you, but this is really good. Now, again, even if you don't believe in God, listen to these words and contemplate what I'm saying to you here. This is written by Matthew West. I take no credit for this. These are song lyrics from Matthew West's song, The Reason for the World. It says, maybe the reason for the pain is so we would pray for strength. And maybe the reason for the strength is so that we would not lose hope. And maybe the reason for all hope is that we could face the world. And the reason for the world is to make us long for home. And home being heaven, home being outside of this world. It, look, poetically, you got to admit, what, no matter what you believe, that's beautiful stuff. Let me read it again. So he's, he's, trying, to, he's trying to disseminate why, why, why pain? You know, because I think that's, for most people that aren't Christians, the big question is always, well, then why does God allow pain? And so many, you could ask a hundred Christians, you could get a hundred different answers. But I, I love his, his writing in this. He says, Maybe the reason for the pain is so that we would pray for strength. So in other words, maybe the reason for the pain is so we stop and pray to something greater than us and pray to get strength to endure it, right? Because I've always said to you all, right, that take these times of struggle and know that they are there to help build up muscles in you that you never knew you had. So he says, maybe the reason for the pain is so we would pray for strength. And maybe the reason for the strength, so why do we need strength, is so that we would not lose hope. So when we're strong, we don't lose hope, right? And he says, and maybe the reason for all hope is so that we could face the world, right? Because the world is is a, a dying, dirty, ugly place. But if we have hope, we can actually face all of that, right? And the reason for the world All of this, again, the the craziness of the world and the painful stuff of the world is so we can long for home. So we don't desire the world. We instead long for something greater. And in longing for something greater, we actually come closer to actually feeling the power of, of God and heaven, something that is not here because we were not made for this world. We were actually made for something greater. That's my belief as a Christian. We were made, and, and, and for all of us, not just me as a Christian, for all of us, we were not made for this world of 
deception and lies and perversion. We were made for something greater. We were made for beauty and love and a beautiful piece of music, uh, a smile from a baby, uh, a puppy that melts your heart, uh, beauty, okay? The opposite of what we see when we get on social media and we turn on the TV and we watch, you know, reality TV and all these people thinking, saying, this is what it's all about. No, it's not. So that, that, those lyrics, those are, those are some off, awesome lyrics to make us long for home. If you get a chance to listen to that song, ooh, if you, if, okay, if you, if you do actually take my advice, look up album, The Story of Your Life by Matthew West, get the deluxe edition. If you're on Spotify or Apple Music, go to the deluxe edition because he has two versions of that song, The Reason for the World, and the acoustic version is so good. Now, the other one's very produced and big, and it's, you know, I will admit it has kind of a Christian music song sound to it i don't know there's you know there's that sound which is i still really love that version of the song but the acoustic version is him on a piano it's an acoustic piano playing piano and i i'm i'm choking up thinking about it it's so good so okay check that out so i hope that that encourages you but i also let me see there are there is um I mean, this is i don't think these are the lyrics i was looking for because I, uh, I was I was on my treadmill a few weeks back running, and this one song came up from Matthew West, and I, I, I all I, all I could think of as I was listening to the words was, "You got to read those lyrics on the podcast, and you've got to you got to do that." So you got to understand, for me personally, as as a Christian, I I open myself up to hear from God every day. I pray that I would hear from God every day, and that He would use me as a vessel to help others get through life easier, better, all that, right? Adjusting the microphone, sorry. So when I hear stuff and I feel like he's going, ooh, you've got to read that on the show, that's because I feel like somebody out there probably needs it. And it's it's you if you're listening to this right now and you're thinking that. So this one is, uh, this song's called You Are Known by Matthew West. It's off his latest album. And, um, yeah, this is a, okay. So it starts with dear anonymous, the one that nobody sees so insignificant or so they made you believe you will never be more than not quite good enough. Dear invisible. You're not invisible. No, this ain't the end. It's just the start of unbelievable. You wouldn't even believe if you saw what I see in you. Okay. You get that? That's what, that's what you're saying to yourself. Sometimes, sometimes we say, uh, I'm dear anonymous, the one that nobody sees. I'm insignificant. I'm, or that's actually what they've made me believe is that I'm insignificant. I'm actually not, but they've made me believe that, right? And then I tell myself, I'll never be more than not quite good enough. Is that you? Do you call yourself anonymous? Would you write, if you were to write yourself a letter, would it be these lyrics that Matthew West wrote for the song You Are Known? Dear anonymous, the one that nobody sees, so insignificant or so they made you believe. You will never be more than not quite good enough. There's so many of us that believe that. And believe it or not, I want you, I want you all to know, um, I believe that about myself a, a, a lot too. And I know you go, but James, you're James. <laughs> you're Jat. You, you know, you're our, our mentor. You're the big brother. You're the guy that's got it figured out. You're right. But I am also still working through things that happened to me in my childhood from age of four, five, six, and beyond that were so traumatic and so awful that they've ingrained in me, I'm insignificant and I'll never be quite good enough. And then it goes on. It says, Dear Invisible, as I read before, Dear Invisible, you're not invisible. No, this is not the end. It's just the start of unbelievable. You won't even believe if you saw what I see in you. Well, first off, who's the one saying that in this song? It's God saying that. So he's saying, okay, that's, that's what you say about you, that you're invisible, that all of that. No. Uh-uh. And in fact, the things that made you feel invisible and have led you up to this point in your life, no, that's not it. That's not you. That's not what I see. And I know because I made you. That's what God says. Now, again, whether you believe in God or not, 
This is my beliefs. This is Matthew West's beliefs. These are his lyrics. They're not mine. I, I take no credit for them. Um, but boy, are they beautiful. And, and, and do me a favor. If you're one of my many dear, beautiful, wonderful fans that listen, even though you don't believe the way I believe, um, see if you can understand why I believe the way I believe, because I believe in a God that thinks that about me, that says, you're not insignificant. Your past is not you. I see you and I love you with a love that will never die. Because what is love? Love is never ending. Love is all these wonderful things. And that's what God is. And that's what I believe. And that's what I've, not just what I believe, you know, uh, drinking the proverbial Kool-Aid of it all. In other words, just brainwashing myself to believe that. Through my own life experiences, through my own interactions with God, through prayer, through uh, divine intervention, through miracles, through things I've seen in my life, that's the God I have seen, okay? So just know that when I talk about these things, that's where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from a idealistic, wouldn't this be wonderful? I'm coming from a, in my deepest, darkest Worst places, that's what happens, that's what I see, that's what comes to fruition. Okay? And then he continues on in the song and he says, So if you wonder if the prayers you pray are bouncing off the ceiling because you're feeling alone, well, I want you to know you're known. And if you wonder if you're just another nameless face in a crowd, well, now you're home because I want you to know you are known. So being known, that would be the theme, even though this has been the Great Scott Time Continuum episode, the real theme of this episode is you are known. The fact that you're listening to this podcast, uh, the fact that you're connecting with me in this way now, hopefully laughing with me, doing the goofy voices and all that stuff at the beginning of it. I know you, you know me, we are known, but we are known by something greater and that is God. There is a power within the universe that knows you, okay? And then he goes on to say in the lyrics, again, these are lyrics by Matthew West. These are not my lyrics. This is not me. I take no credit for this. This is the lyrics from a song from Matthew West called You Are Known. He goes on and he says, I know your greatest fear. I know your biggest mistake. Every square inch of your heart, I know what makes it break. I gotta stop. You all have to understand, um, there's so many of you that have been hurt by things in life and it makes my heart break because I've been hurt by things in life and knowing that, you know, again, these are lyrics read, uh, written by just a fellow Christian, but a fellow Christian that lives a life the way I live my life of getting up every day and praying and praying for the brokenhearted and trying to do our best. So you could say, well, God, this God, this God that you talk about, and well, why does he allow all this stuff? You know what he also does though? He gives people on this planet a heart that is like his heart. People with compassion. He's given me that heart. Now, not instantly in my life, but it's where I'm at now in my life. It's the heart I have. I don't just read these things and think about myself. I read these things and I think about every one of you. And when I do, that's when I get choked up. That's when it's hard to go and continue. But I'm going to push through here. He says, I know your greatest fear. I know your biggest mistake. Every square inch of your heart, I know what makes it break. And I am the one who bends down and picks up every single piece. Every single breath you breathe every single hair on your head, even the chapters of your life that haven't happened yet. And I know the plans that I have are bigger than your wildest dreams. And I know that there's many of you maybe that are listening and going, yeah, right. Sure, James. Oh, that'd be great. It's sweet that you have that compassion, James, but a God that does, I haven't seen it. I've asked him. I don't know where he is. <sighs> Please ask again. Please be patient with him then. Be patient with him? Why do I need to be patient with him? 
He's God. He should be able to do anything. And if he sees I'm in pain, why isn't he there helping me? We don't always understand or know how God is helping us. But the one thing I would say is if you're here now listening to this podcast, he's helping you. And I'm not taking credit for that or saying, oh, aren't I great? What I'm saying is he's, he's reaching out to you. Because I can't explain why I'm now reading these lyrics, which <laughs> I guess I could probably get in trouble for because you're, not, you're supposed to get permission, I guess, for all these things, right? Uh, but I think Matthew West would let me read the lyrics to his songs. I hope so. I, I don't know Matthew West, but um, I feel like I know him. Uh, and uh, I know his his heart for saving people. And if I'm using some of his lyrics to help people see uh, how I see God, I think that that's okay. If you're alive and breathing right now, and you're listening to this podcast, then you're in a good enough place in your life to know that you're okay, all right? Things may be crashing down around you. Bad things may be happening within your life, and you're listening to this as an escape, but you're okay. You're safe right now, okay? You're you're in the JAT fellowship, and you're safe. Let me just finish these lyrics. To be known is to be loved, and to be loved is to belong and you belong here in the arms that won't let go. I am telling you from a place of experience, personal experience, 49 years on this planet of seeing the worst of humanity and the best of humanity. And I am telling you, I feel those arms wrapped around me, those arms that won't let go. And I know that it's God. I know it. And I know that he wants to use me to help other people see that he's there too. So no matter what you believe, believe that there is a presence greater than you within the universe that is dropping everything to wrap his arms around you. For those of you that may not like that I said his, to wrap their arms around you. All right? God is actually love. Because what is love? Love is allowing even the bad things in our lives to happen so that we may learn and grow from them. Yes, but what about the people that the bad things happen to? If God is fully love, then they're with God and they don't have pain anymore. And if they chose to be away from God by not believing in him, but in the end saw the truth once they left their earthly being and went into the other realm, which I know some people listening may not even believe. You may believe you just don't exist after you die. I don't believe that to be the case. Uh, None of the evidence in my life that has been put in front of me shows that to be a reality in any way, shape, or form, scientifically or uh, otherwise. God's got it. He's bigger than us. If you can even just for imagine, suspend your belief and just look around at at the world and realize this is all bigger than like we could never you or i could never create all of this so if something is big enough to actually be able to create all of this then he's got it he she they have got it okay goes beyond what our conceptions can be within our lives and if you can accept that then you can accept a lot more of the things that i'm saying and sharing with you so yeah, big big stuff again here on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Uh, that's that's always my hope is to give you big things to make you think. And let me say once again, why do I say or do any of this? Because you need it in your life. Someone's got to say it. And I'm going to say it again as I've said many times on this show, but I haven't said it in the last few episodes, so I'm going to say it again. I believe in you. I know there's a reason you're listening to this podcast and that you need to hear it right now. You are loved. You are known. You are real. You matter. You're not insignificant. You're not anonymous. You are real. You are meant to be. You mean something to me, to God, to those around you. And uh, this is hard to say, but even the ones that are abusive to you, even the ones that aren't giving you what you need, you mean something to them. Some people cannot comprehend their own things because they've been so damaged. And then to cope, they put up walls, they create things, they do stuff that protects them, 
but in turn hurts those around them. And some of you may have come from a home like I did where that was the case. So you can find love and forgiveness for them because they went through their own things and you can have compassion for them. But it doesn't mean you have to take it or be abused by them or be around them all the time either. So anyways, heavy stuff here on the James Arnold Taylor podcast, but it's heavy. Why? Because my heart has love and compassion for all of you. And I want you to know you're safe. You are known. You are meant to be. Don't give up. All the things that are beating you up are there to make you stronger. I would guess most of us go to the gym or have gone to a gym or have worked out at one point or another in, in life, have done something that has worked our muscles. And the next day or two days later, you feel terrible. And then four days later, you go, wow, I'm a little stronger and I could do it again. And if you continue to, then you build those muscles more. So that's what we're doing here. Breaking down and building up the emotional muscles to get you through to the other side. Okay. Because I've gotten through to the other side on many, many things in my life. And I'm telling you uh, what it ends up being is I want to share that love and hope with everybody around me. And the only reason why I want to do that is because there's a God that loves me and has done that for me. And I want to share that for you because that's kind of part of the deal. Okay. So there you go. Well, I I am going to uh, wrap this one up because uh, we're we're coming up on uh, over an hour. And I, I, you know, normally I do 90 minutes, but I'm going to make these ones a little shorter just because, uh, you know, because when I feel like it kind of comes to a conclusion, it comes to a conclusion. So, you know, that's the one thing I do. I just kind of go until I, I, I mean, the truth is I could probably talk all day on this and maybe I'll bring it up in the next one. But for now, I felt it was the important stuff to bring up. And for now, I felt really, I felt like God personally was telling me, you need to say these things today because someone needs to hear them. So if you're the one that needed to hear it, which it is you because you're the one listening right now. You're the one I'm, I'm talking to. Uh, please don't give up. And now I'm going to make you laugh. Okay. I need to, uh, I need to um, close with a song or song lyrics. So more lyrics, different lyrics, but this time would be for uh, ending the show. Normally, I've been doing one of my characters, Obi-Wan or Fred Flintstone or Magneto or one of these people, the Minions, reciting lyrics from a song. But Hank has not been on the show yet today, and I think everybody loves Hank. And wouldn't it be funny if Hank... Hey, Hank! Hank! Hey! What? What? Yeah! What? What? Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. You should... um. Hank, how are you, first off? I'm doing good. I, I, that was, um, I, you know, I, I like I like what you were saying there, James. You know, we give each other a bad time and all, but, you know, but the truth is, you know, I mean, you're like, you know, you, uh, I don't know what that means. No, you know, you, you, you do the things and you say the stuff is important to people. It makes people feel good and you're doing all that. And I think that's good. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, why do you keep? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that? That was me doing you. That didn't sound like. All right, okay, I get it. You don't think I sound like you, Hank? Would you like to close the show with some lyrics? You want me to do the lyric thing like, like you do with your with the characters? Characters, characters. Do you purposely say things wrong just to make me correct you? What do you mean? Nothing. All right, yeah, yeah. What do you got? What do you you know? Well, I was thinking first. I thought you should do like James Taylor's handyman because you're supposed to be like a handy guy. But you're not handy? I'm not handy. Ah, bah, ha, ha, ha. That's funny. No, that actually is funny. I mean, it's not even supposed to be funny. It's just true. You, you, don't, you don't fix anything. Well, you know, I'm the engineer. I'm not, the, I'm not a fix-it man. Right. You're not a fix-it man, but you are supposed to kind of know how to fix things here and stuff too. Anyways, I thought instead we could do uh, hello, again, uh, hello Again by The Cars. Do you know the Cars? There was a big band uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, no, they're a big band when I was a kid, too. The, the Cars, they had the, like, moving in stereo, and they had, uh, she's my best friend's girl, she used to be mine, da 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 Yeah, they were a rock band in the 80s. Yeah, and then, they, you know, they had, uh, who's going to drive you home tonight? Yeah, boy, look at you. Don't sing too many things, because then we'll have to pay the rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, but they had that song, Hello Again. What if you recite from that? Because in it, like I'm looking at the lyrics right now, it says, hello, hello, hello again. And you always say, hello, 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 hello. So I thought that's funny. Yeah, okay. Let me, let me try. Okay. Let me, uh, I'll do, uh, let me do some of that. But you know, the other thing is there's hello again by the cars, but then there's also hello again by Neil Diamond, <laughs> which is, you, you have a more of a Neil Diamond vibe to you. They're coming to America. You know, you're doing the whole, who's that? Yeah, Neil Diamond. Yeah, I kind of, I, lo- I look and sound like Neil Diamond. Well, you don't look like Neil Diamond. Don't, come on, don't kid yourself, Hank. No, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, rock star-y kind of. Well, first off, Neil Diamond's not a rock star. He's a, he's a singer. He's a singing star. People, a lot of a lot of people probably don't know who Neil Diamond is that are listening. No offense to Neil Diamond. I love Neil Diamond. I grew up listening to Neil Diamond. That's why I say that maybe some of the kids listening to the show may not know who Neil Diamond is. They probably don't know who the cars are either. But uh, then there's one other Hello song you could sing, which is Hello by Lionel Richie. And, and not sing, by the way. Uh, I don't want you singing. No, you just want me reading the lyrics. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let, let's look at what you got then. You got, uh, you got the cars, Hello. Hello, hello, hello again. Hello, hello, hello again. I know, I know you're a dreamer who's under the gun. I know, I know you're a dreamer who's only just begun. Hello, hello again. Hello, 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 hello. You might have forgot the journey's end. You tied your knots. You made your friends. You left the scene without a trace. One hand on ground, one hand in space. Hello, hello, hello again. Hello. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then, so, then what about Lionel Richie's hello? (laughs) Which... There's an earworm if ever there was one. That song's going to get stuck in your head. Okay, let me see. You got the lyrics? Yeah, I pulled them up on the screen here. Just look right there. Okay, let me see. I've been alone with you inside my mind, and in my dreams I've kissed your lips a thousand times. I sometimes see you pass outside my door. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Is it me you're looking for? Yeah, that's yeah. actually that one's a little creepy having you sing that uh, or to speak those words to me because you're staring at me the whole time too. That's a little weird. It's like you knew him by heart. Yeah, no, I, li- I like the Lionel Richies. <laughs> you like the Lionel Richies, okay. Okay, let's try Neil Diamond's Hello Again then. Let's let's close the show with Hank reciting the lyrics to Neil Diamond's Hello Again here on the James Allen Taylor Podcast. Um, uh, oh, oh, we got to have Mr. Announcer Guy come in and end the show though first. Hey, hang on, Hank. Well, I was already... I know, hang on. Jeez, man. I... Okay, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. Hank is going to recite lyrics to Neil Diamond's Hello Again. I know, I'm very excited about that. Yeah, me too. Um, so uh, we need you to do all the legal mumbo-jumbo to end the show. All right, legal mumbo-jumbo, here we go. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumi Go Inc. Recorded at Chat Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking Myself, the podcast, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. What do you think of that? I think it sounds just like every other ending to every other episode of this show. But that's a good thing. Yeah, man. All right, man. Let's let Hank uh, take us away and end the show. Okay. <clears throat> Reggie, Reginald, don't call me Reggie. He says, do this. <clears throat> don't do that on the mic. That's, nobody wants to hear that. I, do, I don't believe what Reggie, Reginald, don't call me. Now you got me saying it, uh, says. That's, you do that somewhere else to warm your voice up. And then, plus, that doesn't really help your voice. <clears throat> Stop it. Hello, hello. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Hello again. Hello. Just called to say hello. I couldn't sleep at all tonight. And I know it's late. I couldn't wait. Hello, my friend. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. (laughs) Just called to let you know I think about you every night when I'm here alone and you're there at home. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. This one's a little strange having you uh, read this to me as well. Yeah, let let me finish, though. Maybe, okay, this is the big bridge part of it. Maybe it's been crazy and maybe I'm to blame. But I put my heart above my head. We've been through it all and you love me just the same. Don't look at me when you say that. What? Come on. And when you're not there, I just need to hear, Hello, my friend. Hello. It's good to need you so. It's good to love you like I do and feel the way when I hear you say hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. 
Just called to let you know. Hello, 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 hello. Ah, okay, Hank. There you go. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Hank. Hank, the engineer here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, closing us out this week with Neil Diamond's hello. Again. Hello again. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. All right, stop it. Okay, everybody. Hey, I hope you enjoyed. This was uh, this was a crazy podcast. I finally ended it. <laughs> the podcast that the episode that took over a month to record. <laughs> we did it. And now I got to go record more of them. All right, everybody. Hey, if you haven't already, please rate the show on uh, Apple iTunes. Uh, give me five stars and give me a nice rating. And I'm going to I'm going to read some more of those uh, reviews uh, this next episode. As well as you can comment on YouTube and, and subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, or go to my social media, Jat Actor, J A T Actor, or The Jat Cast uh, on Twitter as well. And follow me on Instagram as well. Please follow me on Instagram as well. And we will talk to all of you very soon. Hank, we say, what do we say then? Hello, hello, hello. No, 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 we're ending. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Yeah, that doesn't work as well, does it? No, not as, it's not as, uh, yeah, no, it's not as, goodbye, 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 goodbye. All right, stop it. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Stop it. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Okay. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Goodbye. No, that's my job. I say that. All right, yeah, you say it at the end. Goodbye. Goodbye. You always have to have the last word. What do you mean? See? What? Goodbye. Hello.